Good evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights alongside Mike Fenner. I'm Jay Pushkar. Mike, after a week off from many of the basketball programs, the first round of the PIAA state playoffs is finally here. A total of a dozen games are on the Friday night schedule, mm -hmm. including a triple header out at Edinburgh University's Macomb Fieldhouse. That's where we begin with the action. LaShawn, Lindsay, and Meadville, the District 10 5A champion Bulldogs, battling Shaler. Titans going to work early in the first. Here's the junior Dylan Bradshaw up and under for the early Shaler lead. Relatively quiet night for one of the top top scorers in the district was Sean Lindsay, but takes his defender to the cooker and scores to the second half. Four point lead for Meadville, make it six on the pull up. Davion Butler, he had a big night for Meadville. Then a Lindsay drive and finish. He had 14, six point lead late in the third quarter. Then in the fourth, Lindsay, the triple try, pure five point lead for the Bulldogs. Less than five to play in the fourth. Butler on the pull up from the baseline. He had 26 to lead the Bulldogs, makes it a four point lead. Last chance for Shaler, down three. No. Then off the loose basketball, here comes Shane McElhaney with the loose ball. And Butler with the punctuation as he throws it down. Meadville's moving on behind a 49-44 to win. Well, we had, we had a couple good possessions, and I was proud of the you know, couple possessions. We moved the ball and got some good looks we wanted. Uh, made some plays down the stretch on the defensive end, you know, blocked some shots, and uh, you know, Shane made a good play at the end there to get that basketball game ahead to Dave Young and finish the game. So you know, it, was, it was a good effort by everybody, and uh, you know, just proud of them. And we just kept working. We pushed it on them. We knew that they were going to apply the pressure. We just, we just worked. To the Lewis Fitness and Performance Scoreboard. Meadville with the win 49 to 44. 26 points for Davion Butler, 14 for LaShawn Lindsay. The Bulldogs move on to play Mullenberg on Tuesday night. Let's check out Class 4A. Titusville matching up against Newcastle at North Allegheny High School. Nice feed coming up inside for the Rockets. And Cole Culver, as he had the two points there, Newcastle counters with the strong move and better body control on the baseline for two. Then they would run the fast break perfectly with the deep outlet pass, almost the length of the floor for another lay-in. Titusville responds, though. Guy Anthony with the slick move in the paint. He gets the ball to bounce his way. Then off the fast break transition, Cade Skinner would stop, pull up, bury the three-pointer, However, it's Newcastle eliminating Titusville this evening, your final 72 to 61. Other Class 4A finals on the Lewis and Fitness Performance Scoreboard. It's Hickory toppling Ambridge 66 to 51. Grove City got better of Bedford 67 to 52. Back to McComb Fieldhouse, the Class 1A first round matchup. Jamestown, after their first ever district championship game, taking on Manesson at the Borough. And how about Jamestown in the second half? Underneath here, it's Richard Graham, the senior, with the finish. And then recollecting himself, Dawson Urbanski. No, no relation to Kent, different spelling. <laughs> Gets it to go there for the Muskies. Loose basketball here for Manesson coming the other way. In transition, off the miss, able to clean it up is Darnell Howell. And gets it to go. Jamestown going to come up short in this one. Your final score. Let's see it. Manesson 75 to 54. I'm so glad you clarified that, Mike. As we turn our attention now to girls bracket action. And after beating Fairview in last week's District 10 championship, Mercyhurst Prep faces Beaver in Class 3A. Not only were the Lady Lakers riding an eight-game winning streak coming mm -hmm. in, but they were playing at the site of their District 10 championship win. Look and back nice. to that nice. site. Yeah. To the Haggerty Family Event Center we go. Opening half for the Lady Lakers, and this one was a dandy for the fans watching this one. Jillian Spano buries the corner three at the other end. Hannah Bloom splashes from downtown for the Lady Bobcats. More from Mercyhurst Prep, though, off the inbounds play. Megan Spazzarni with a quick first step and off the window for two. MPS running the floor now. Caitlin Pasco decides to just pull up and knock down the short jumper. She had a game-high 18 points in this one. And as I mentioned, this one was tight from the opening tip to the very end. Bobcats knocking down yet another triple. Beaver knocking out Mercyhurst Prep in the closest of margins. They win it 55-54. to The Lady Lakers finish 20-6 and overall. How about game one of the doubleheader at the Hag? Featuring upstart Fairview going up against Avonworth. Pick things up in the second half. Maddie Reisenauer with the aggressive move to the 10. Then it's Ashley McCall with the dribble drive and the deuce. Tigers were trailing by eight, though. In the closing seconds of the third, off the inbound, Sammy Momeyer plays beat the buzzer, and she even surprises herself that it counted. Lady Tigers were down three at that point. On to the fourth. Avonworth would make a key run and make some clutch buckets. Catherine Goetz with two inside. Then it's Harris 
Robinson with another drive and score. And then that nice fast break conversion there. And it's Fairview, unfortunately, having their season come to an end as Avonworth wins it 49-39. to you know, you go back as a coach and you wish you maybe could have done one, one, two, one or two things differently. But, you know, I had three girls with buddy lips. Uh, two girls fell out. Um, you can't fault our effort. You know, at halftime, we were all just talking about how this might be our last game, so we have to give it our all. And I think that's been the um, idea this entire season. So on the Lewis Fitness and Performance Scoreboard, Fairview's magical season comes to an end. They finish with an 18-7 and overall record. Congratulations to them. Back to Edinburgh, Maplewood in the 2A first round, meeting up with former Villa Maria coach Scott Dibble and Bishop Canavan at the Borough. How about early in this one for Maplewood? Left-handed finish at the rim. Jordan Rozier, the junior, with the finish off the glass. More from the wood. Rozier fakes the three, gives it up. Extra pass. That pays off. And going glass is Izzy Eimer, the freshman, with all three of those and in transition for Maplewood it's Cassidy Mangus going off the window as well. Solid start for Maplewood in the first quarter hanging around with a two point game early but Canavan was too much from deep and Scott Dibble's team moving on as Bishop Canavan knocks off Maplewood. Your final score 67 to 44. Other scores on the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard in terms of girls basketball action. Cambridge Springs sees their season come to an end. They fall to AC Valley 47-44 down at Keystone High School. Sager Town loses 45-29 their season comes to a close down at St. Mary's High School. And Mike, on Saturday, the Villa Maria girls finally get back to the court as they'll be back in action following an 11-day break. Yeah, they've not played a game since beating Westinghouse back on February 26th, but they're back at it tomorrow against Elizabeth Forward at 4.30 from Edinburgh's McCollum Fieldhouse. Head coach Doug Chusey says the big focus is on Bree Spurnack, the seventh-ranked javelin thrower in the country and a pit track commit who leads the Lady Warriors and has a lot to offer on the other side. They have two or three kids that uh, just jump off the page at you, and then um, you know their next three or four are just they're, they're they're solid. They knock down open shots. They defend. They rebound. There's a lot of things I've I've learned a lot of leadership skills over the past four years, and I think they're really helping out the team. We get to talk on defense. We learn that our offense is better, and it's it's really helping us out. We're young, but we've come together, especially here at the end, which we've needed to, and we just everyone loves each other, and we've gotten really close. The Villa Maria girls take on Elizabeth Ford tomorrow at 4.30 at Edinburgh's McComb Fieldhouse, Class 4A, first round action. Another team taking to the floor on Saturday evening is the General McLean Lady Lancers. After falling to Warren in the district semifinals, Tori Hansen's girls responded with a win over Hickory. And by doing so, General McLean is back in the state playoffs for the first time in five seasons. And for the girls, it's been a goal going all the way back to junior high. We're all friends on and off the court. I mean, we just, we see each other in the hall and we always are always just laughing and talking. And it's really good when we're on the court too because we play well and connect well when we're out there. It's always been one of our goals. And when I was a freshman, I didn't even think that we won three games. And to be now as a senior going to St. Pl State playoffs, it's been one of my goals. General McLean tangles with Chartier's Valley, as you see on the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard. They will be playing on Saturday evening, beginning at 5 p.m. And, of course, they will be playing at Peters Township High School. And, of course, that says 3 p.m. It will be a 5 p.m. tip-off. Other, other games, I should say, coming up tomorrow is, I'll just pass it over to Mike, and he'll handle it the rest of the way. The Warren girls will be in action at Oakland Catholic. And, of course, I lied to Mike saying that I'll take over. <laughs> and the Fairview boys will take on Aliquippa. That game is at 6 p.m. as well on Saturday evening. Let's head to some wrestling now. Day two of the PIAA Wrestling Championships. Another banner day for a quartet of Cathedral Prep Ramblers. At 145, Panero Johnson scored late in the third period to break a 5-5 tie. He advances to the semifinals. Meanwhile, his teammate at 182, the defending state champion, Carter Storaki, scored a 16-3 major decision over Scott Joel, Dorian Crosby, and Kawan uh, Debo all reach the semifinals. They will return to action tomorrow morning with a shot of possibly advancing to the gold medal round. Meanwhile, in Class 2A semifinals, 132 pounds, Cambridge Springs' Ty Varndell made 
met Zach Whitmer, and Vardell would ride out the closing seconds with a three-point advantage. He will go and wrestle for a state championship on Saturday afternoon as he won 7-4. Sager Town's Kenny Kaiser also advancing to a gold medal match on Saturday. Meanwhile, Union City's Gavin Henry fell in his semifinal match 12-2. The championship finals for Class 2A will begin at 2 p.m. on Saturday down in Hershey. Still to come, we'll 